Hello and welcome to the Studio Brutal video. Here I'm going to show you how to use Granulator 3 um, and I'm going to show you via an example patch which is probably the best way to do it and this is a patch made out of a cowbell. This is the original sound. It's just an A08 cowbell, that's the same MIDI, it's just loaded in a normal sampler and this is it, this is um, the Granulator 3 patch with no processing after it, it's just got a cord held sounds like that without the cord. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'll give away the samples and everything in the description below as normal, so yeah, go and get them, and uh, yeah, then follow along. And please, while you're there, like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Basically, um, you probably know this, but granular synthesis isn't really synthesis, it's sampling. You are taking little grains, uh, tiny little slices, um, you can see them all here. It's just taking little snippets out of the sample, and playing them back, looping them, crossfading them, and the speed at which it does all of these looping and crossfading uh, gives like textured long sounds, basically. Um, and with Granulator 3, they've simplified it. Granulator 2 is good, uh, but fairly complex, and this is much simpler and easier to use. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I'm basically just going to talk you through what everything does uh, real quick, and then show you how I made the, the cowbell patch from scratch. Um, so yeah, basically what you've got duplicate this uh, so I've got a copy um, so yeah that's it that is it without the um, that's just one note um, so yeah what you've got is two displays here one which shows the waveform which you click on this one one which shows uh, your modulations which are real simple two envelopes and an LFO the filters here as well so at the end I'll go through that in a bit then underneath, and also you can put it on auto, which is a button in the middle, and that's pretty cool. So if you're changing the waveform over here, it shows the waveform. If you click one of these other buttons, like you want to change the LFO, it will pop up the LFO. So auto is probably what you want it on, so it will just switch the views when you click these buttons. Um, yeah, then whatever you press here, it shows you in this, this row underneath, it shows you... Um, the modulation so like how much so you this position button here you can add it to envelope 2 here for example an LFO you can make it random and there's another random thing here called variation at the end and that's pretty cool um, I'll show you what that does in a sec because it relates to this button but yeah so for every single of, of these four buttons uh, and these ones over here these six you have a bar here with um, with its modulation so you can basically send it to envelope 2 or LFO and a couple of other things um, the slide and press here uh, which are to do with uh, MIDI controllers you know that they're, they're to do with those expressive keyboards where you can like wiggle your finger as you're playing the piano and get vibrato and stuff therefore um, they're for them um, so yeah you can control them with granulator which which would be really good for live uh, use um, so yeah, so you've got uh, four four main controls here, and these control how it loops and plays back. Like position is here. This is the first one, and this is basically sample start. It's set as a percentage, not as like normal uh, samplers in time, but it is just sample start. Then scan is the speed at which it plays back. I think one is normal speed. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to sound normal anyway because it's uh, just playing back grains. But you can you can change the sound quite a lot by doing that. Um, then you've got grain size. Uh, again, you can you can modulate these. You've got grain size, and that is going to change. That is basically the loop. The sorry, the size of the little snippet. Uh, that's really turned down short. Let me turn the variation off and it'll just be a, a standard tone. It's basically like you, on a normal sampler, you're just looping it tight, similar to that. And then shape is sort of like on a, on a normal sampler, you know, you can when you loop it, you can crossfade how well it starts and ends by crossfading it. That's sharp. So if you turn it up, it's shape. You, if you turn it up, you're basically crossfading the loop ends, so you get a really smooth sound. That's quite a cool sound. But sometimes you want to add the grittiness back in, and you'll just—it's not—it's not crossfading it there. If you turn it down, yeah. If I do that, you'll hear 
the notice you'll hear in shape if I if I put the transient in. And if I turn it up, it's much smoother. Um, uh, so yeah, that's what they do, and these are the main things. These are the main uh, controls, and modulating these is how you're going to get good. Um, they sort of uh, textured drones out of um, uh, out of any sample really. The tail end, this is using the tail end of a cowbell, but uh, you can use anything, any samples, any, especially stuff like field recordings and stuff, and getting in uh, reverb into it and um, lots of background noise. You can get really textured sounds. Um, so yeah, basically as well, this is the classic mode, which is the same as Granulator 2, which I use all the time. I quite like it. But there's two other um, uh, algorithms. Loop is a uh, it's more of a of a just loop in one grain, and cloud is loads of different uh, grains. Which can be good for pads, but I I'm every time I, I'm using it, I'm using classic. I, I much prefer that. It's the standard uh, algorithm. Um, and yeah, the variation here, basically, this turns up the randomness. Uh, in all the other things so at zero you've got no uh, uh, so like if I go to scan I've got this thing here called distance and if I t and it, if you turn that up to 100 and then variation up it's gonna move the position it's gonna move the um, the uh, it's gonna change the scan it's gonna make it more random same goes for position if I turn this if I turn variation up and turn that to zero it's not going to change but if I turn this up and turn variation up it's making the position change by like uh, over a second so if I pull variation down all of these all of these controls they're what they have at the end for variation will do nothing but then if I turn variation up it makes the sound come alive it's more organic everything becomes a bit more random and so you can and also what you can do is modulate variation as well so for example you can turn it down so you get these static like quite loop sound and then if you turn variation up it's it's different every time but you can modulate variation so like with envelope 2 so then it, vary, it, it only adds variation with the envelope uh, so that yeah that so the variation itself is modulated so yeah, that's that's quite cool. Um, so you can just basically make it between the, the these five things I've covered so far. You can make a really organic sound. Um, then transpose that pitch. I've pitched this as the cowbell. Sorry, that's quite loud. If I put it, um, that's the normal pitch. That's the pitch of the normal cowbell. I turn it down two octaves, and you can obviously uh, modulate this as well. If I add it to the LFO. You can hear it there, or the envelope. The envelope is um, it's, it's got a, it's got a long attack, and you can hear that. Uh, so that's transpose. It's pitch basically. Spread is a cool effect. If I turn it down, um, it doesn't do anything. But then if I turn it up, it detunes every slice differently, like a little bit more to one headphone and a little bit less to the other, or left right stereo spread. So if I turn it up, you can hear it. If you've got headphones or you're sat between two speakers, you can hear like a like a wide stereo chorus as you turn it up. And this is good because what it does as well is because if a grain is shorter and higher pitched, it re-triggers quicker. So at really high levels, you in one ear you'll get a higher pitched sample re-triggering re-triggering quicker. So you'll get more. Um, yeah, that's quite. And again, that's that's a cool sound. Again, you can uh, change that. Uh, with velocity as well, which means you can add a step sequence to so one of the Ableton step sequence if you want and sequence all these. Um, or you can do it with envelope 2 or LFO. Um, so yeah, you can modulate that. That's quite cool. That's spread for that nice stereo chorus. Then LFO frequency is obvious. If I add LFO to pitch and then turn up LFO frequency, it's obviously the frequency of the LFO. You've got all the LFO settings here. Like uh, that's Hertz, that's um, synced. They call it LFO beat, but it's um, synced LFO. And then this one, which is uh, just measurement and ratios. But you, you can get some crazy sounds with that. 
because uh, I think it's going into audio mode. Um, and yeah, that's the that's the LFO basically. Uh, you've got quite a few different shapes here, including move, which is that. But yeah, you've got random, a different random, which is sample and hold. Uh, down, up, uh, saw waves, and uh, triangle and sign. Uh, and then you can set the phase, and also it's free running from the phase. Um, and then the stereo width, so you can obviously you can make. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. It's making this, the anything modulated by the LFO. It's making one side, uh, one stereo, one headphone shorter and one longer, basically quicker and one faster, one slower. So um, you get a really nice, uh, you can get some really nice stereo sounds. It's great for pads. This, if I put the chord thing back on. Get some really cool sort of pad sounds, um, and yeah, LFO amount is, is how much the LFO modulates everything else. And again, this itself can be modulated as can LFO frequency. You can make it speed up uh, and slow down with the envelope. And then filter frequency is obviously the frequency of the filter, um, and then volume. And again, all of these can also be added to variation and uh, modulated. So you can add randomness to the volume as well. Filter, just a bit more about the filter real quick. It is That's a standard filter type. Let me just take all the other modulation off. Um, so... So that's this normal low pass filter with a bit res, without resonance. And then with resonance, I'll add it to the envelope. So yeah, that is, that is low pass. You've got another different low pass, which is different uh, tighter filter. But then you've got these other filter types, which are two filters combined. You've got normal high pass at the end. But then you've got these, which is like a high pass and a low pass combined. And in this case, the width here is as turned up. So you could, it's high pass and everything. This is how the second, this is a cutoff of the second filter, basically. But... It is not just cut off, it is relative to the first to this cut off to the cut off of the first filter, so it's a bit complicated but not too much. You just want to find a sweet spot basically. Um, it's yeah, so it's how much uh, the second filter um, is less or more than the first filter frequency. But some of them are quite cool and it, 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 it's showing you the shapes for most of them so you can see what they are. That's a double notch filter. So yeah, so yeah, that is basically it. That is uh, all the controls. Um, that's, that's quite nice. Let me just put it back to how it was. Um, so yeah, that is it. That is everything um, in it. There is one more thing that I would show you is in and out, and this is really good. This button here. If you go to the waveform view. Uh, you can save, you can literally capture any sound into it by clicking the capture button and selecting, um, you can select any other channel and put it in there, um, even before and after effects, and you can say how long you want it to record, and then it will just be in there to use as a patch. So you can just take any other element of your track, let's say you've got a vocal, you can just take a tiny snippet from it, stick it in here and then turn it into a pad, for example, which is quite a nice uh, feature. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, uh, that is how uh, you use Granulator 3 and uh, take a normal cowbell like that and turn it into uh, into a pad like this. I'll probably put the patch for this in um, the description below. I'll put it on the website on the article um, so you can go and get this. But it is basically just uh, modulated, um, everything's modulated by uh, envelope 2 and a bit of LFO. Um, but yeah, that's quite a cool sound. So yeah, that's it from me. Uh, that's how you use Granulator 3. I might do some other examples with this. It's really good. I've really enjoyed using it in my own music. Um, um, yeah, I hope you find it useful. And uh, yeah, that's it from me. Uh, have a good day, and uh, good luck with your music making. Take care. Goodbye.